Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications at NAB 2023 with Carl Winkler from Electrosonics. How are you doing, Carl? Doing well. Awesome. Thanks, um, thanks for being with us, and thanks for kicking off NAB 2023. My pleasure. Um, so, electro has got some some new stuff, some old stuff, some blue stuff. Uh, what is what do you got? So we'll start with the uh, the full integration of the DSR4 with the SL2, mm -hmm. which is pretty big news, and it's only uh, about a week old. Yeah. And uh, basically, like before with the SRC and other predecessors, you know, you've got your RF scanning and tuning via the interface here, channel assignments. Uh, it, re it recognizes the tuning groups and even shows you the name. And so that's, that's a fantastic thing for uh, Sound Devices users mm -hmm. and uh, those that have the DSR4, yeah. which now, you know, it's been, a, it's been a huge hit for us, this receiver. It's very popular. It's done very well. So it's just great to have that. I know every, a lot of people were waiting for it. So that's the first thing I want to show you. Awesome. And for people who haven't checked out the tuning groups, because you mentioned it, I was particularly impressed watching your video on that. It's a really yes, slick integration. Yes, named group entries mm -hmm. is a big thing. And uh, you know you can pull it up here. Let's see. Let me take a look at that. So we'll take a look at channel one. And uh, right here, no group. We can choose a group. Let's say group W. And then when I look at a frequency, it's only going to show me group frequencies. And it will show me the name of that channel pulled in from the named group entries that we put together in the unit. So it's really quite slick. Yeah. And uh, makes it easier for those that are managing a large number of channels. And I mean, this is a very compact package with eight channels of wireless yep. and this, uh, this A33. So um, it's, it's got a lot going on in there. And so, yeah, if you haven't seen the videos, you have. But I have, if yep. anyone hasn't seen those videos, we take a deep dive into the DSR4 and talk about how to create those name group entries, how to use them, the shortcut to get you to the frequency page by pressing the two buttons together, and boom, I'm in my frequency page, I'm looking at my group entries. Mm -hmm. So a lot going on in that little receiver. Um, so to take a look at those videos. Cool. And yeah, and the one other thing I want to mention that I thought was particularly cool is you can also program compatibility. So for people that are worried about mixing and matching transmitters, like That's it'll a great just point. do it all. Yeah, and these receivers, backwards compatible with everything we've made mm -hmm. back to the digital hybrid early yep. days, so 20 years. And uh, that's right. In the groups, you can add the compatibility mode now. So let's say you're using SMWBs and DBSMs. You want to specify, I've got D2 in, my, in this entry. I've got HDM in this entry. I've got new hybrid in this entry. Yep. And it will change the receiver compat mode when you pull the, the group entry in. And that hap even happens when you pull it in from here. So... A lot of great stuff happening. Cool. All right. Well, let's talk about the new, I guess, little brother, would you say? Yeah, the little brother. So, you know, when we originally announced this, the DSR, this is the two-channel version of that receiver, mm -hmm. it looked different. It looked more like a black SRC, uh, but we've changed the design now to have the same front panel as the DSR4. Mm -hmm. So this is the DSR. There's no 5P version because we've got a 5P connector built in. Mm -hmm. And this receiver does vector diversity full-time on both channels. So it's a lot like a DCR822 uh -huh. in a slot package with a color display. So that's the DSR now. Got it. Uh, and that's you know, delayed a little bit in shipping, unfortunately, but it's coming out in a few months here. And uh, I think everyone will be happier with that interface as well as the performance of the unit. And is it using the same backplates as the SR or as the DSR? Yes, it's same backplates uh -huh. as the SRC mm -hmm. and, and the, all the previous. So you've got your bat sleds, you've got your EXT bottom plate, you've got your 25 pin bottom plates, mm -hmm. your Sony bottom plates. All those for the SR uh -huh. work with the DSR. Got it. They're all compatible. Cool. Do you, uh, do you know what the lead time is on this? Because I know you just announced the redesign a couple weeks ago, so I know it's We're thinking coming. September 1, but okay. we'll find out. Got Hopefully it. we can stick to that schedule. It's looking pretty good. Everything's coming together nicely. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, we, we started talking about integration. Let's yeah. talk a little bit more about integration. Uh, sure. What is this that you have here? Right. So we have a lot of requests for some kind of rack to mount. Uh, their new DSR4s into, mm -hmm. as well as maybe some other portable receivers they mm -hmm. have. You know, when I see our stuff on Instagram, it's always these mixed systems. You know, yeah. people have a couple 411s, they've got an SRC, now they're seeing DSR4s, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Yep. And they're all interoperable. Uh, but we haven't had really a good way to mount them together mm -hmm. until now. So this is the UMCWBD. Yep. It, it's uh, based on the older UMCWB, which was a, a rack distro for the 411, 211 type mm -hmm. receivers. So we've modernized it and uh, in two ways. One way is that you can mount any one of our portable receivers in here now with these plastic snap-in inserts. So you want to put a, 
an SRC into this thing, you can just snap this insert in. You want to put a DCR-A22 or a 411 into this thing, there's a snap and insert, mm -hmm. okay? So it's capable of mounting any of our portable receivers. And here, we have one racked up and working, showing us that I've got an SRC, a DSR-4, and a couple of A22s mm -hmm. all racked together. So what is that, two, four, eight, 10 channels of wireless mm -hmm. in this one rack space. And you can, you know, without too much imagination, imagine four DSR-4s in there, right. and 16 channels in one rack space. This is a DC distro and RF distro only. It doesn't have any audio outs, so you would take your audio outs from the back plates of the units. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly straightforward. DC in, antenna is in, DC distro to all the units. So that's the UMC WBD. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, different inserts would be needed. Yep. There's also collars for the middle of the unit because the smaller units are going to have a smaller cross section. So we've got inserts for the middle. Mm -hmm. And then for larger receivers, they would not need this insert. Got and it. these are just injection molded, relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just get the kit of these plus screws plus middle insert. And it just pops in and, and it out. It just pops in and out, yeah. Cool. And what is that thing you have in your hand? So what I've got here is the fact that uh, the different receivers over the mm -hmm. years have used different DC connectors. Uh -huh. And so we'll have little adapters uh, uh, coming off of tails. This will just be a snap-in. This is an unlocking one for mm -hmm. a 411. Mm -hmm. We'll have one with the locking connector for like your SRC mm -hmm. backplates and one with the Hiroshi 4 for the recently introduced uh, DSR4 uh -huh. EXT USB. Nice. Okay. Got it. And this, so it seems like kind of a theme we're talking about is integration, and this would allow you to integrate your wireless, other brands' wireless, like that. There's yeah. a lot of different things that you could do with this. Yeah, pretty much, you know, all the slot receivers out mm -hmm. there have the same cross section. So yeah. you could mount anything you like in here as long as there's some way to mount it here. Yeah. And uh, one of these, like for the SRB, SRC, would fit other slot receivers, for mm -hmm. example. Cool. Yeah. And I guess that leads us to the next part, which is a uh, variation on a theme, but go ahead. Sure thing. So these are bag frames. Mm -hmm. And this is the same front panel design as what I just showed you with the snap-in mm -hmm. inserts that would go in here. And uh, we've got one for two units and one for three units. These are just mechanical mounts that help you organize your bag. They're very lightweight, but they're made of metal. And those same inserts would go in here so you could organize a, a 411 in a DSR-4 mm -hmm. or a SRC in a DSR-4, a couple DSR-4s, whatever you like. This one has two openings, and this one has three openings. So mm -hmm. this would be a bag frame two. This is a bag frame three. The small one, the, the two, would be available in a short and medium height. Mm -hmm. This is the medium. And then your three frame unit would be available in a medium and a tall height uh -huh. for the larger bags, like this bag. As you can see, going into this, uh, That's this bag. That's a stingray large. Stingray yeah. large, uh -huh. yeah. So this would have your three receivers. And it goes in, and it's just the right height. Great. Awesome. So I, I these are bag frames. Great. And so I should have mentioned at the top of the show that we're live um, and that we are able to take questions from the audience. Great. So if there are questions from the audience, um, uh, you know, please, Kendra, ask them now. Uh, and yeah. Anyway, what so we're we're just getting a lot of enthusiasm about the rack mount so far. Uh, so people were immediately wondering about that, and you guys have already covered a little bit that. Great. Well, that's great to hear that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, like I say, we got a lot of requests for racks, and uh, here it is. It should uh, should go a long ways toward getting people to you know uh, giving people an ability to organize their receivers. Yeah. And again, the mixture of receivers makes it you know because we see, like I said, all these mixed systems out there. A twenty twos, SRCs, see that all the time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And um, Kendra, are there any other questions, or should I uh, stall for time? We did get one more question asking about the uh, when does the advanced rack mount come out with Dante? Uh, we don't have a. The question was about a, an advanced rack mount with Dante. We don't have a timeline for that, but that's something that's clearly being worked on and developed mm -hmm. in the lab. And it's a comprehensive design, so it's going to take a little while. Okay, so that's something. Yeah. Is that something that's publicly known? Because that's the first time I've heard about that. Uh, we've talked about it here and there, and just okay. answered questions about it. Mm -hmm. So it's you know again until we have a timeline, we don't really talk about it too much right. until we have pricing. And cool. And uh, did you mention when this is going to be available? This should be available pretty soon. 
we're down to the last little details about like the, <coughs> excuse me, the DC tails and um, the design's done. It's actually uh, based on an older design. It's just been updated a little bit right. with the mechanicals. So uh, within a couple months, we ought to be announcing it and giving dealers pricing and availability. Great, okay. yeah. it's going to be a busy summer. It will be a busy summer. Awesome. Any other questions from the internet, Kendra? Yeah, we got a question from YouTube asking uh, when the bag racks are available and when uh, what will be their cost. So the question was about uh, bag frames and when available and cost. Uh, probably also within a couple months, these are nearly done. I think we're waiting really for these inserts uh -huh. uh, from our uh, sub-supplier. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you the dealer's pricing and information on that very soon. Again, within a couple months. Got it. Great. Yeah. Um, and I want to know, uh, this is just kind of off the subject, but what's the response been uh, to the DSR-4? How have you found people in enjoying it? Have there been anything that surprised you about it in terms of how people are using it? Yeah, uh, all good questions. The response has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, we announced it last year and got a lot of pre-orders for it. Yeah. And so we've caught up or very close to catching up. You know, it's always a kind of a rolling thing. We get yeah. more orders every week and it's, it's been fantastic. Um, I, I'm just, you know, I'm surprised a little bit by the immediate worldwide acceptance. Mm. These things have gone to Australia, Europe, Latin America, plenty of in the US, mm -hmm. uh, Canada. You know, so th that's been a wonderful thing. Um, and I would say that, you know, for a product that's brand new, uh, this thing has, has gone very well. Yeah. So it's been well vetted in the engineering process, but we also had an excellent round of beta testing. We got some excellent feedback. Yep. There was a hardware update uh, from the beta testing and many software updates mm. that came along. So what was actually released was, you know, uh, just dynamite, you know, and it was thanks to the beta testers to, to help us get there, yeah. you know, because they're the ones thinking, oh, well, I'm going to use it like this or this or this, and I'm going to put it with this. And uh, so that, that really helped a lot. So it's, it's just gone really well. In terms of how it's been used, um, you know, it seems like all of a sudden it's, it's on football fields and it's out there making mm -hmm. TV shows and movies and everything. So people are putting their faith in it, which I, I really appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Kendra, is there anything else that we have, or can we let Carl get back to business? Uh, they were one, there was one person asking if Lectro is giving any thought to an AES backplate for the SRC. Uh, yes, actually, we, we are, and we're fairly close on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not showing it here, but sure. uh, the design is done, and mm -hmm. it's down to the last little fine-tuning and, and code like that. Keep in mind that sound devices will need to know about that as well uh -huh. because there's going to have to be a handshake that says, oh, it's not just an SRC, but it's an SRC with a digital backplate. Uh -huh. So we're very close on that as well. So that's a DB25 AES yeah. backplate as opposed to the exactly. one that you already have already, the TA3 one. That's right. We have one, uh, the AES backplate mm -hmm. that comes out to TA3s. Mm -hmm. So this will be exactly, you, and you almost nailed even the name of it, it's okay. the SR DB25 AES. Okay. And it will be AES3 and AES EBU compatible. Mm -hmm. You can dock it in an SL2. And ultimately, again, once there's a handshake from sound devices, it'll recognize it as a digital receiver, allowing you to dock an SRC and a DSR4 in the same SL2 and go all digital. Got it. So that's very close. Cool. Kendra, anything else? All right. So we talked a little bit about the okay. uh, possible Dante capable rack mounts, but there's also a question about bag racks that are capable with Dante. Um, we don't have a plan for that. The bag racks are very simple in terms of mm -hmm. what they're supposed to do, which is just, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. just a mechanical mount with no distro of any kind, no audio distro. So that's not in the plans yet. Not to say that we wouldn't consider it, but uh, at the moment, bag racks don't have any electronics at all. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, all right, great. We're going to wrap it up and head on to the next thing. Carl, thank you so much for being with us to kick of off NAB 2023. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in a few minutes at our next stop. Uh, get your questions ready.